Ah, uh, 2021. The year we all thought would be a full-on back to normal, only to get a watered-down version of 2020 and match with weird variant names and uh, then the unheard of concept of a chip shortage. We saw some products sort of die, RIP Galaxy Note. We also saw some companies exit the game altogether, RIP LG. And then we saw some weird moves we're still trying to figure out, and I'm looking at you, OnePlus. Yep, it's been an interesting year to say the least, but at the same time, I also think it's been the best year for smartphones. I call 2020 a year of refinement where companies were even embracing the mid-ranger a bit more, but 2021 was kind of a different animal. I'd call it more a year of maturity. A lot of the products we saw before as nice gimmicks have now evolved to become trustworthy products up to the point where it's made us debate if what we've known as a flagship is actually the best you can buy. It almost feels like a transition year, so our list for the best of the best got even more interesting. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and these are our picks for best smartphones of 2021, sponsored by MediaTek. So for the sake of brevity, this list only includes the winners for each category. I'll be linking to the full article on pocketnow.com where you'll be able to see runner-ups and honorable mentions, along with uh, some extra categories. Let's start with the best budget phone that offers 5G. I mean, we saw a ton of offerings from Samsung and Motorola that did make this list pretty packed, but I think no phone did that job better than the OnePlus Nord N200. I think it has the best design of the bunch and also the best bang for the buck in the spec department. We're talking 90 hertz refresh rate, 64 gigs of starting storage, a massive battery and 5G in tow. I'm sure in other regions there might be other options, but at least in the United States, we don't know of any other phone that provides such a package in less than 250 bucks. It's seriously kind of a steal. Next up, let's talk about the best camera. This is a pretty rough category as lately the determining factor for what makes a flagship is its camera capabilities. So we've seen companies like Samsung and Xiaomi go ultra, Vivo going Pro Plus like Huawei did, and Pixels making a flagship comeback. And yet, love it or hate it, they're all great for photos, but none of them take video as an iPhone. It was a tough pick, but I think the company that struck the best balance of everything is Samsung with the Galaxy S21 Ultra. From the capabilities of all of its sensors to getting that camera hump under control to a night mode that rarely disappoints to the ability to capture the moon at its full glory, it's just hard to beat physics when one phone is ready to tackle pretty much everything in one package and then matched all of that with one of the most powerful phone packages we've seen this year along with S Pen support. It's crazy cool. Now, last year we had a best flagship category which would pretty much be dwarfed by how mature foldables have become this year. More on that soon. I know some of you still want the best of the best when it comes to a traditional phone, and in that sense, I think that few companies did a better job than Apple with its iPhone 13 Pro. And notice, this is not the Pro Max. I'm sorry, but I'm personally tired of the concept that a phone has to be massive to be a flagship. For 2021, Apple decided to bestow all Pro models with the same capabilities, and I think this is the best iPhone that I've ever used. Call its design and iteration all you want, and sure, Apple wasn't first at most of the things this phone can do, but Apple's reputation of late but better continues. It's hard to argue with the elegance of this design, the beauty of this display, the performance of this A15 Bionic, and everything these cameras can do. It's also shocking that for today's social media, iPhones continue to do it better than most. To have all of that in a phone that you can handle with one hand is hard to beat, and especially when you now have battery life that can back that up. Now, an interesting trend is that the most capable phones are not necessarily the best looking ones, or not necessarily solve consumer needs in the most creative way. We live in a time where we want more and less, and yet you either have the choice of getting more and more with a conventional massive flagship, or you truly get more and less 
with Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip 3. Listen, if you haven't seen or held one in person, just please do. This phone isn't just gorgeous thanks to its elegant approach to the design, but it just feels so right. Like, forget about the fact that it folds and focus on how much it makes sense to only have a large screen when you're using the phone, which you can then collapse to half its size and put it in your pocket. Think of the fact that since you don't have to worry about it bending because it does so by design, it allows for a much thinner footprint that's also easier to handle. If it weren't for the fact that the battery life could be better, this seriously is one of the coolest phones of the year, which now has a usable outer screen and even water resistance. And then match all that with a price that's uh, even less than most conventional flagships, and I don't blame you if you now feel that it's time to switch to something cooler. But fine, I know that the vast majority of you don't care about the best flagship or the best design or the best camera. Sometimes you just want a phone that has enough of everything. And for that, we have mid-rangers. The lines have been blurred a lot with this category though, as there is such a thing as premium mid-rangers, which now have the price we knew for flagships five years ago. Samsung and Moto have some pretty neat offerings, but I think the OnePlus Nord 2 did it best. It's got the looks, it's got the 90 Hertz fluid AMOLED, plus more starting storage than any other phone on the list, pretty good cameras, warp charge 65 in the box, a Pac-Man version, and the power of today's sponsor, MediaTek. This OnePlus Nord 2 is powered by the Dimensity 1200, a pretty high-end six nanometer chip that enables great AI, which in turn provides an added kick to its cameras and multimedia capabilities, along with true dual 5G and great power efficiency. There's a reason why brands like OnePlus trust MediaTek. Follow the first link in the description to learn more about them. That said, there is such a thing as a best value category. We've always known these as flagship killers. I mean, OnePlus made this term famous years ago and which later inspired Google to get a bit more aggressive a year later with its Nexus 4. Last year, this crown went to the S20 FE, of which we're still waiting for its successor, but this year, no phone screams impulsive buy better than the Google Pixel 6. I seriously think it's got better looks than the Pixel 6 Pro with its matte rails and its flat display. It packs the same chip, nearly the same cameras, along with so many of the perks we've known for owning a Pixel all for a crazy $599. At this price, even Samsung's A series looks bad, and don't even get me started with the iPhone 13 series once you remove all of those weird subsidies that don't really apply to everyone. It's just too good for the money at a time when a phone this capable is at least $250 more. Now, last year we crowned the iPhone 12 mini as the best compact phone simply because it was left alone in this category. Seriously, what other phone brought all that power in such a tiny package? And yet, if we're honest, that 12 mini wasn't really a great phone. Its battery life was just too compromised. This year is yet another where the iPhone 13 mini is left alone, but this time it is a solid phone. Like seriously, in-body image stabilization on such a tiny camera package with far better battery life and all the efficiencies provided by Apple's A15 Bionic make the mini pretty irresistible for anyone who wants a real one-handed phone. Though I'd jump on it as quickly as possible as rumors have it that this is the last mini that we're getting. Now, one of our favorite categories is that of the best all-rounder, and it's mainly because there is such a thing as a phone that might not have the best design or the best cameras or the best specs, but the implementation of what it does is so good that it's the best jack of all trades and master of some. I usually call these the perfect workhorses because they get the essentials right, and for this category, we have the Oppo Find X3 Pro. I'd call this one of the most underrated phones of the year because even if you could assume its predecessor did more with its cameras, I think this phone did better. The concept of having the exact same sensor on two focal lengths was genius. 
as I really feel that it still is the best night mode that we have from an ultra wide. I also feel that it has the best display on any phone given its added contrast ratio, which is then matched by great battery life and a color OS that I feel has grown up to be even more stock than Google's current implementation of Android. But okay, this is it. The final category of the year, what we call the best of the best. The phone with the most innovation, which is enough to turn heads and push us into a new era of phones. The main reason we had to separate the conventional flagship category is because in 2021, there is such a thing as a phone that's so much better. This year, it's the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. I think Samsung seriously hit it out of the park here. Three generations later, this lineup went from a nice ideal to a phone I can now recommend to anyone. Absolutely every single concern we had with any of its predecessors has been addressed. We're talking water resistance and stronger materials, plus a screen protector you don't want to peel off anymore. 120 hertz screens everywhere on a package that's pretty ideal for one-handed use as a phone when closed and which then morphs into the ultimate tablet when open. And then to endow this form factor with an S Pen is just the stuff of dreams. I seriously feel that Samsung should just call this the Galaxy Note, as the name is so much more appropriate to what this device can do. It's become my ideal productivity machine. At a time when screen sizes are getting out of hand, this is the most creative way to achieve a tablet that can then fit in your pocket. It's still expensive, but pretty irresistible with Samsung's trade-in deals. Definitely a phone that I have no problem in recommending today. To conclude, yes, 2021 was not the best year in so many ways, but smartphones continue to get cool. Now, as for the best company of the year, the crown definitely goes to Samsung. I feel it's been the most aggressive with its conventional phones and also the most innovative with how it matured its foldables so quickly. As for the best innovation of the year, I'd say custom ARM chips are now making the dent they deserve. It's crazy how Apple now powers even its pro MacBooks with them and how Google, MediaTek, and Qualcomm keep pushing this further. Now, as for the biggest letdown, all I'm gonna say is, dear Microsoft, I mean, your Surface Duo 2 idea is really cool, but a nice presentation is never enough to justify such a bad implementation. And then again, LG, thank you for all of your innovation. In the smartphone space, you will be missed. To the winners of 2021, bravo, and don't forget to read our article where we talk about honorable mentions for each of these categories since the list was pretty long. I'm definitely looking forward to what 2022 will look like as rumors are already ramping up. Let us know if you agree or disagree with our picks in the comments down below. Yes, I know that there are more phones in other regions, but we can only judge what we get to test during the year. While you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on my personal handles to see me test the crazy amount of phones this year. It was pretty cool. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.